When we're looking at active range of motion itself, we want to make sure that we cover both the active range of motion of what's going on in the uh, upper part of the thoracic spine, the middle thoracic spine, and the lower thoracic spine. I'm going to come over to this side here. So if we want to assess the active range of motion for the upper thoracic, because we know there's referral patterns here that can come from the cervical spine, we also know that the thoracic spine itself can move based on that. We can use head rotation with overpressure and turn the other way and overpressure to see if that reproduces pain. Then we're going to have to decide, okay, was that coming from the cervical spine or is that coming from the uh, thoracic spine? And we'll do our testing accordingly. We'll cross our arms. Sometimes I like crossing the arms lower just because it doesn't put as much tension through the fascia. And then we'll end up having our patient rotate through looking for obvious restrictions in rotation. You can quickly check out some of the combined motions with rotation as well because when we do the rotation, the conjunct mobility is to the same side if we initiate with rotation. So that's called rotection. Or you can side bend and the rotation goes to the opposite side. So that's latexion. Looking for pain reproduction, obvious restrictions. So you do pure rotation, then combined motions, rotation, latexion. So we've covered all the rotation. So then the next part is looking at flexion extension. So we can have our patient flex and we can do overpressure. Then come back up and extend two finger overpressure, seeing if that's causing any pain in the interscapular area. For the middle part of the thorax, we have them slouch, and then we'll do overpressure. And then if we're doing extension, we actually have to have them bend forward at the hip a little bit so that we can extend thoracic spine that way. Some people actually have their patients put their hands on, uh, interlocked here so that you can extend them that way, looking to see if that's provoking or not. There are times when we want to have the patient in standing to take a look at some of the rotation as well, or also to look at lumbar mobility in flexion extension like we looked at with the modified Schrobers. So the only other concept too that we want to layer on to this is that sometimes we look at range of motion and because there's so many joints to compensate through and because we had shown that we can have rings that are restricted, you could find a range of motion into rotation that's restricted, and that might be because the thoracic spine is translated that way. So as a quick retest, if it's painful or restricted, you could actually do a shifting of the spine and then have them rotate and see if that improves it or not. So you can play around with the rings a little bit, but you don't wanna get bogged down in your assessment as far as then all of a sudden you're with the rings and then you haven't done reflexes, you haven't done this, that, or the other thing. But you could do a quick test retest, or if not, at least put it in your head that once you're done making sure the patient is safe and appropriate, then you'll come back and check to see if, if there's a ring displaced one side or the other.